What's up, y'all? Welcome back, uh, Interworld Playthrough. My name is Jake, aka Center Tarnished. Um, just got done recording the other video, part 10. Uh, and we are just going to kind of continue making our way. I got to, I got to kind of pound some of these out um, to catch back up. But uh, yeah, I'm going to continue kind of the theme of want to read a a comment. This won't be from the last video I just did because I just went straight into recording this one. So this is still part nine comments. Um, but. A comment from Kama Cameras, great name. I wonder if you're in. I wonder if in your analysis you'll find any sort of dichotomy between stagnant and running water, in terms of its implications for the unconscious. I don't know which lore tuber brought it up, but apparently in Shintoism, there's a correlation between stagnant water, lakes, ponds, etc., and decay which fits into the aquatic theme of the Prince of Death as shown by his octopus corpse, the tibia mariners, and the puddles in death-blighted areas. This also clearly relates to uh, Melania's swamp of Aeonia as another reservoir of stagnant water, and as both forces rot and death blight are seen as cancerous growths, I wonder what role both demigods play, might play in America's unconscious. Hmm. Nice. Um, yeah, when I first read that, I was, I, yeah, that's that's a really, really, really good point. Um, and so my knee-jerk reaction is, is is this. So as far as the the unconscious, I don't know that there's a that there's a distinction between the running water and stagnant water just in terms of the psychology of it but i do think in a more collective broader um analysis of the video game you could look at stagnant water as again kind of the resistance to change in that that kind of delays progress it uh is ki it kind of has like a rotting effect because it you're no longer letting new life grow you're no longer letting these new ideas kind of uh percolate you're just very much um oh god uh just very much kind of not you're you're no longer evolving um and when you're no longer evolving you're not really living anymore because you're you're completely you're disregarding new information that's coming to you because you kind of already have this ideology made up in your mind um and i think you look out in the world today and it's 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 apparent now more than ever that ideologies um, can very, very quickly be turned into toxic, toxic things. Um, even when they have the best intentions, you know, when they start out, it's, uh, it gets very, very dogmatic very quickly. Um, and again, like, It's, it's hard to say for certain, like, what you could, like, running water is very much, like, cleansing, um, uh, and stagnant water is very rotting. And I, I know that sounds like, yeah, like, no shit, but when you, when you put it into terms of think about it in terms of people's way of thinking um, when when somebody has more of the running water river 
aspect or, or way of thinking. I would say that they're... They're constantly evolving. Um, they're not stuck in one particular mindset. They will take new information on, digest it, all, all, all of like what would you would consider like a very healthy mindset. Um, and then stagnant water, like if somebody has a very stagnant brain and they're not really willing to to take on new evidence to reshape their worldview based off of this new evidence um, that they, they're, they're kind of done. Um, with their, criti their, their critical thought process is no longer evolving. Um, and when that happens, things become very cult-like, dogmatic, because it, you, there's no conversation, there's no uh, evidence that will make that person change their mind. Not that they're trying to change their mind, but as you get new evidence and new discoveries come into you, your worldview should change. Um, and if you are neglecting these, these things and you're cherry picking the things that fit your narrative, um, that, that's when things can become very toxic. Is someone there? Would you donate any Shabiri grapes in your possession to me? I'm on a pilgrimage. In search of the distant light. I don't know if I have another one. one of those grapes. I don't I don't got one right now, baby. I know where one's at though. I hope that kind of gives you an idea of at least into what I think. This definitely doesn't not necessarily right. Um, but I think as far as just the, the unconscious I think it all kind of, all water, um, kind of represents the unconscious, which I know is kind of a lazy answer, and pff, I could be way off. Um, ow. Jeez, guys, relax. Ow. Move, 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 move. I mean, you, you, you could even, like, um, you could put that, that principle into, like, American politics. Um, like, Jesus, where is all this shit coming from? Um, like, our, our political structure was made for the 1700s, um, not for the, the 21st century. And <laughs> I'm pretty sure that some people in Congress are still from the 1700s. I mean, I, the average age must be 70 years old. And to think that we're, there's any sort of new information, um, any, any sort of progression is next to impossible because of the people in power, their mindset, um, and I mean, I, I don't, I don't want it to become like a political thing, but it's just very like once again, once that happens, and especially in in these systems that are incredibly powerful and rule over people and make laws for a a population, um, if their minds become stagnant, then the whole, the whole system underneath of them becomes stagnant. And that becomes a very toxic, very toxic, very quickly. Um, there you go. Would you donate them on a pilgrim when I eat one of those grapes? Yeah. There you You're go. You're not like the others who give me grapes, are you? 
They rest their trembling hands upon me. Howling wordlessly, they gently stroke my eyes. Their frail fingers, emaciated. Yet still, they give me the grapes. But you seem somehow firmer. Mm. You are most kind indeed. May the blessing of the fingers be upon you. Um, and then as far as what the demigods um, could represent in America's psyche. Uh, so as, as far as Melania goes, um, so there's there's a few there's a few different. So first of all, I believe that um, outer gods represent like very strong emotional states, um, or even. Uh, psychological pathologies, um, you know, obsession, uh, addiction, anxiety, things like that. Um, I believe that they are these external forces that can very quickly become a god in your life. Um, and if we look at Melania as as the oh man it's, it's it's very difficult to like to get my words together because there's so many different so if we look at at Melania as she's the goddess of rot and let's just say for Right now, Rot is a, um, it's an, it's an outer god that, so to me, would, would be akin to a strong emotional state or some sort of psychological pathology. And if we look at Rot as something that literally rots you from the inside out and can spread like a disease, um, to me that very much represents something akin to grief, uh, something that can completely control your, your life, your thought process, your vision of the world, um, and kind of your overall state of being. Um, and if that is not a god, I'm not really sure what a god is, because if that can can have that big of an effect on you, that's the most godly thing that, that we know. It can literally just shape your entire wor way of thinking and how you behave and how you act. Um, so if we look at it, you know, as these demigods are either aspects of America's personality, um, she... Melania would very much represent that uh, to me. Um, just a, a grief-stricken mother who can't, who everything that she comes into contact with is kind of touched by this grieving process. Um, and it's incredibly powerful, which is why Melania is incredibly powerful. Um, another way to look at Melania is that she is the element of change, um, in America's psyche, that she, just like Rot, kind of spreads slowly and changes the world around us, um, so does change, um. Where is she? This one? Um, and like we talked in the last one, she goes to fight Radon, and Radon is very much resisting change. So, 
millennia of representing change um, fits in quite well. Hello. 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 Please. Over here. Hello. Hello. It's rather chilly here, isn't it? My mistress sent me off on an errand, but I was accosted by a ruffian. And now I'm in a bind. Could I ask you lend a hand? Perhaps. That thug made off with a precious necklace. I need someone to retrieve it. Only... He too is tarnished. If you've any qualms confronting your own, I shall find another. Oh, thank you dearly. What a blessing that we've met like this. The thug should be resting at ease. Yep, yep, yep. I'll go get it. Who do you guys think these statues are? Whenever I see a statue holding some sort of like book or tablet, I immediately think of like, uh, like a prophetic kind of character, like spreading the gospel of whatever this particular person believes. Um, and like it would make sense for us to be Renala, um, kind of her journey from astrologer to, you know, the head of this giant academy and this like Carrion royal family. Um, it would be like a book of astrology and cosmology and, and things like that. Um, it's also interesting that at most of them you find um, smithing stones and that's very much um, a like crystallian type of thing. Oh well, it, it's been a long while. It's me, Patches the Untethered. I'm still in business, if you can believe it. Now I'm my only supplier, so I haven't got much. But everything here is top notch. Patches Emporium, now open in Rea Lucaria. By the way, uh, have you met that girl, Raya? She's a strange one, but I believe she was in need of help. Not that it's any of my business, but if she rings your bell, why not lend her an ear? Mm -hmm. You're making your way to the Erd Tree, no? Well, well, I heard something that might help. A special means of reaching your destination. Have you ever seen an Iron Virgin? The clunky contraptions are whirlwinds of sickles and spiked wheels. But long ago, they were endowed with a spell of transposition. And get this, a surviving virgin sits at the bottom of the big water wheel in the Academy of Rhea Lucaria. Its transpositional powers Fully intact. So right, if you get caught in it on purpose, it'll chuck you out straight at the base of the Erd tree. So I'm told. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh huh. Um sure, we'll get this. We'll get that. Ooh. Can I do dual S docs? That'd be kind of cool. Uh huh. Did I ever activate his great room? No. Really? Whoops. Let me go do that before I forget. Yeah, so that, that's a very, like, long-winded answer. Um, but that is, that's how I view Melania. Um, yeah, so I think, like, on a, on a personal level, I think that she represents grief 
to to America's um, psyche, and then more on like a collective or a yeah hu humanity type of level. She to me represents something more like change. Um, and how resistant people are to that change. And, you know, I, I think that she is both of those at all times. I don't think it's like, oh, here she represents America and then over here she represents change. I think like she, um, she represents all of those things all, all at once, all the time. And then Godwin is something that I've actually been thinking about quite a bit lately because I, I to me I feel like Godwin also I feel like he represents America's like ego um, he's kind of like the golden child um, and I'm sure you guys have all heard the the term ego death, um, which is like a very powerful experience. It can be an experience, you know, spiritually, or it can be a drug-induced experience, you know, something like ayahuasca or DMT or something, mushrooms, um, where you you the part of yourself that gives a shit about what other people think about like what you your status in the world your you know all these very ego driven things um you com it completely dissolves um and essentially what it does is it reconnects you to like your roots to nature um, pretty much everybody as far as I understand it that has this experience um, they kind of come come out of it with the same kind of this profound we are all one you know the universe I am the universe and the universe is me type of thing you know I'm I'm connected to that tree and I'm connected to that bird and all of these things are we're all just one thing um, and I feel like ego death is a important part of the process of individuation um, and it's often you, you can almost think of it, you know, as a, the Philosopher's Stone, you know, you, you you have this thing and then you need to break it down. And that's kind of what it is. It's like this breakdown of the ego because it's not really doing anything for you. It, you, you might think that it is and, you know, if you have an expensive house and a nice job and all this stuff, like, you might think that that's important. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, it really doesn't mean jack shit. It's, uh, it's all very ego driven. And at the end of the day, we're all going to die. And that job isn't really going to get you anywhere. But, you know, the experience that you had with your children or with your family is really, that's going to be what carries on. And that's not an ego thing at all. That's just a very oneness, you know, kumbaya centeredness I guess type of type of thing um, and in my first lore video I said that the the Ur tree and I still kind of believe this that the Ur tree is the physical representation of her hover ego um, which would make 
actually now that I think about it, makes really good sense with Godwin that he is the death of the ego that is basically rotting this tree. Um, and it is... So, okay, so let's just think about it. Let's think about it this way. So if Ronnie is the rebellious side of America's personality and Ronnie was the one who put this whole thing in motion, but Ronnie is very much a part of America, um, you, you have to be, you have to embody that rebellion aspect of yourself in order to go as far as something like ego death. You have to be willing to take that drug, to um, take that spiritual spiritual journey, um, and kind of forget what everybody else is is saying about you or thinking or whatever the the current zeitgeist is, and you have to just do it for yourself, um, which is a very like rebellious thing. It, you know, it's a, it's it's not what you do on an everyday basis. Let's just say. So for Ronnie to essentially kill the ego isn't necessarily like this act of rage or hatred towards Godwin or anything like that, but it is a very, it's almost like this um, enlivening like breath of fresh air almost that you no longer are a slave to your ego and that um, once you come out the other side of this like who kind of your, your personality will change your your whole view of the world will change um, and the more that I think about it the more that that fits in so well with the story um, and the things that we see and the different cello colors that we that we see um, it's it's all just one giant story of if more people would experience something like ego death and treat people like they are themselves um, and treat the the our our world like it's part of ourselves um, that the the effect that that would have would be what are you looking at you trying to start something gigantic ah, that necklace what you're after is it mm. well show me what it's worth to you and I'll consider parting ways with it I'm not in love with it or nothing You're a shrewd one, Chief. First, you hand me the runes. And don't try nothing, neither. All right. Mm. All right. All right. Take it. Things no damn use to Um, do. so then... Your bloody idea, mate. Lancelot du, du Lake, um... Responds to Kama Cameras and says, When you mention Merica's unconscious as it relates to rot and death blight, it reminds me of Irina slash Hyetta and how her blindness gives her a particular connection with the unconscious from which the flame of frenzy emerges. Melania is also blind and must spend her life resisting the scarlet rot that comes from within her, perhaps from her own unconscious. As for Merica, oh, here, let me, I'll, I'll just take that certain uh section right there um yeah it seems it, it it seems that the again this kind of goes back to the stagnant water running water type of thing that the eyes if people are blind or have some sort of affliction with their eyes that they're not taking in new information now for fuck sake this ain't good. Whoop.
Oh no 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 You bitch That fu that literally always fucking happens. You're one shot away and they just pull something out of their ass. Um kinda I kinda forgot what I was Oh yeah, so so blindness. Um, you're you're no longer taking in information. Um, so your thoughts um, become the dominant way that you uh, interact with the world. Let's just say, um, and if you're not very careful that can turn dark quickly. Um, the fog, please. Oh, yeah. Thank you, kind. Did I forget to? I am. I see. You are very brave. But a steady heart. Such, please. Brave Tom. Most Tom. You thank you, thank you, thank you. Volcano man. Yeah, so, um, I think that that is why Irina essentially be becomes Hyeta, if you will. Um, um, let's see where I want to go. Let's go. Isn't there a way to get up somewhere around here? And it, like, it, it would, that would make sense that if Melania was born blind or through her affliction, lost her eyesight. Um, that rot, the the outer god, the external noise, if you will, um, starts to become her god, um, and she can't really do anything to um, to fight against it. Um, It's also, I believe that Mikola's needle is uh, supposed to represent uh, a lobotomy tool. Um, so back in the day when people were, uh, had these psychological pathologies, um, lobotomies were kind of the the answer to 
lobotomies were the treatment, let's just say. And what they would do is it would be a gold essential ice pick or needle. Um, and they use gold because gold doesn't really interact with the body. Um, so it wouldn't cause any sort of interactions, negative interactions while they were doing this procedure. And what they would do with this golden needle is they would insert it through the patient's orbital socket or their eyeball um, and basically <laughs> like wiggle it around in between the hemispheres of the brain to try to rewire the person's brain and that was thought to rid them of this illness that they had of whether it would be schizophrenia or depression or addiction or whatever it was um, and if if Melania is afflicted with some emotion or psychological pathology that she cannot shake and Mikola's looking around at the Golden Order saying like you know let's just say the Golden Order represents Christianity why is your God not helping my sister why is like why is this happening nothing no prayers nothing that I'm doing is helping this so I'm gonna turn to something else to help her and Mikola's needle has the ability to basically fight against the outer gods. So if the outer gods represent this either traumatic emotional state or some sort of psychological issue that he would essentially use lobotomy, he would lobotomize these people to get them to autocorrect Kind of, um, and I know that in some cut content, I think it uh, it said that to use Mikola's needle, insert it into your eyeball, and I believe that it was taken out because it would have been like too on the head for you know lobotomies, and I think that that it, it would have been connected a lot quicker, and then from there you can easily okay. So if if the purpose of it is to resist outer gods then the outer gods must be some sort of psychological condition and that kind of once you connect that it starts to shape the whole your whole view of the entire world um so yeah again Mikola represents many things one of one of which i believe is almost like because he's always dressed in all white i believe that he represents some sort of like surgeon who would perform these lobotomies um, to hopefully treat these patients that have some sort of affliction. Um, Jesus, Chubby, pretty fast. Um, that whole thing is, I'm planning to make a lore video on it because I think it's, it's a connection that I haven't seen been made yet. 
um, but something that fits in uh, really well with you know what we see in game and then kind of real life real life psychology um, but anyways yeah as far as far as the whole blindness thing yeah I think that that's definitely it, it I think it's just supposed to sorry that was probably annoying um, show just when somebody's left to their own thoughts or they're no longer taking in any information no longer interacting kind of with their the out, outside world how quickly their thoughts can turn into a very toxic dark place um, that becomes their dominant force of of anything which is a very godly thing um, so I will read the rest of it and then he says he or she I don't know as far as Merica I think I have a decent explanation for the role of death in her unconscious we can interpret her ceiling of destined death and removing death I'm gonna walk right off the edge Hold, please. We can interpret her sealing of death and death and removing death from its death itself from the golden order as her compartmentalizing a part of herself that she fears, dislikes, and casting it out of her conscious mind, wanting to rid herself of it. Yep. However, that part of herself is still there in her unconscious and over time it in inexorably what is that uh inexorably reemerges as the result of stagnation rather than flowing out of america like a river that part of herself simply sat at the bottom of the deep waters of her unconscious stagnant water breeds a variety of plant insect life and it is in the form of this new life that death reemerges if death cannot exist under the golden order, it will return to the lands between in a new form that can fit the golden order's parameters, thus those who live in death. FromSoft has used the stagnant flowing water dichotomy in all of their games since at least Bloodborne. You're right, it's a very Shinto concept. I remember, I remember first learning about it in one of the all-time classic lore videos, The Bastard's Curse by JSF. Huh. Um, so let's just take, let's just take death and golden order and let's go over those two things really quick. Um, so with Carl Jung still as kind of our, our guiding light, he was very critical of Christianity because it lacked this darker side, this death side. Um, he believes that everybody, a full person, has all of these aspects of them. And he criticized Christ as lacking this part of himself. He didn't seem to have this shadow side, this more dark, kind of like death, you know, that, that side of him. Um, and I believe that part of removing destined death, if you look at it from a more collective side, um, removing destined death is, is supposed to be the, represent Christianity in Christ, um, at least in Carl Jung's perspective, excuse me, perspective. Um, because if a person lacks those things, they are not really a well-balanced whole person. And if an unbalanced person is the figurehead of an entire religion, it's not good, essentially. Um, and I... I think that that is the
one of the representations of removing destined death. Um, is it supposed to symbolize that that aspect of Christianity and of Christ? Um, and then if we look at, on a more personal note, um, America, I believe when she, her, Jesus. Um, I believe Merica was more of the Glomide Queen on a personal level, um, which I, my lore video, which I'm still working on, unfortunately, um, probably still have another few days working on it. I'm I'm working through that, but if. If Merica represents a Christ-like figure, her shadow must represent something like the Antichrist, which would be the Glomide Queen. Um, and if that part of herself is sealed up and never really finds the light of day and can't be expressed at all, um, then it will seep out somewhere. Um, I don't think that it's coming in a new way that fits the parameters of the Golden Order. I think it is the, the flood wall that is starting to crack and then eventually will burst open. Um, if, if you think about it that way, it's not like a flood is trying to fit in with the world, um, but rather that you just, you simply cannot contain it. And in fact, the more that you try to contain it, the worse and worse it becomes. Um, when like you could just release parts of it, uh, Like a, like a pressure valve. Um, if something is starting to build up and build up and build up and increasing pressure, if you don't release it a little bit, it will explode. Um, and again, I, I believe that this is what we're going to see in the DLC is this explosion. This uh, You push down death and the unconscious for so long that uh, it exploded and is now the dominant force of, of the world. So that's kind of how I view, and again, like there's a lot more that I want to say, but because of my lore video, I don't want to really spoil anything. Um, so that's, I hope my lore video sheds a lot more light on it. Um, but. Well, that's that's how I see death, uh, the Golden Order, death relative to America, um, and then essentially the what I believe will be the. Um, the DLC. What? Why is she not here? Have I not even talked to her yet? <laughs> Alright, let's uh... Let's go back to here. Read another one. Um... Me Rush Room. 
um, says, ah, ulcerated tree spirits, the unconscious desire to combine flesh with the tree, no matter how horrifying the result. Regarding women and reproductive cycles, I think there is a decent amount of designer intention to unpack in that direction with land octopus ovary and the chanting dames sing, singing in Latin about how they will never be mothers. Um, yeah, so in my, in part nine, yeah, that's the comments I'm reading. Um, in part nine, I, um, I explained that I, I found something in the map that looks, if you look at the map from a like 30,000 foot view, you can see the whole thing. It looks very, very much like a, a fetus um, in the mother's womb. And um, I kind of wanted to get you guys' opinions on it. And I am pleased. Would you yeah, he's, he's right. The more that, uh, come closer. you know, we already know that Miyazaki, for one, and all of his um, all of his games that he he produces, there's definitely an element of the parent-child so relationship. He well. loves that. He loves that dynamic uh, friction that that comes with it. And then good day. Um, get it up. And then yeah, he's. Me is right as far as you know the 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 different the other aspects of what we find in game as far as reproductive cycles and, and things like that. Um, let's go sit down, girl. Nice to see you again. My name is Roderica. I should have told you sooner. Isn't this place impressive though? The round table hold. Covert quarters of the two fingers and gathering place of champions who vie to become Elden Lord. I never knew the guidance bestowed upon us tarnished had such fantastic roots, although it's all a bit much for me, in truth. I'm still looking for my own purpose. It's all a bit much for me. I'm still looking. Mm hmm. Um, so I want to quickly look at these really quick, um, and then just keep in mind the, the, while we're looking at these, just think about the scar seals compared to the Shabriri grapes. So here, and in my lore video, I, I, I make the claim that this is representative of our ego. The branches that come off of it are the aspects of our personality that we ignore, that we don't nourish, that society would reject, all those different things. Um, and we really only nourish the one that we care to or that society would accept or that would boost our ego, um, which is that golden flower. And you don't have to make a giant leap to say that that ends up becoming the Erd tree. So. This to me is just representative of either America gaining a consciousness and growing her ego, or this is just collectively humanity doing that process. And then once we, the things that we envelop in those roots, in those vines, are parts of our conscious ego persona self. Um, everything that is not enveloped in that is more part of our unconscious, the traits that were kind of died off, those types of things. Um, again, like the, the game, once, once we have an understanding of it, the game becomes, it's not like it's clear by any means because Miyazaki and FromSoft do such a good job of, you know, they build up a story and then months before release or even weeks before release, they start picking out certain things. So it's not really a complete story and you have to make leaps in order to, you have to fill those gaps on your own. Um, but I, 
I really wholeheartedly believe that with this framework of psychology that like we're right we're in that sweet spot of we don't need to make these huge gigantic leaps or these grandiose theories we can kind of see the art direction and see where this is all going understand the basic components of what makes up a person's psyche and it's easy to start like kind of dissecting it and putting the whole story together um but i do want to go talk to any of i don't think i'm gonna have time um so we will start with her in the next video um i'm just gonna keep pumping these things out so um i'll keep reading all your guys's comments keep them coming uh they seriously help everything they help my thoughts you know they help the community's thoughts and uh if you haven't yet please subscribe um i've noticed on my lore video at least like 98 percent or something like that are people who are unsubscribed so if you are um, and you're liking it, please do subscribe and give this video a like. Uh, it really does mean a lot. Uh, I work, work pretty hard on trying to keep my thoughts um, not wandering and like keep them focused on psychology and stuff like that. And uh, the lore videos themselves are just gigantic projects for me. Um, I, uh, I'm by no means an expert at it, so it just it takes me way longer to produce what I think is a good, uh, a good video for you guys. Um, I do think at one, you know, it, I, I do think something that might be cool to do is to just do like a three or four hour kind of rambling, uh, lore video almost, and just go through like, essentially what I'm doing with the playthrough here, but um, where I'm just sitting in front of my computer and I can pull up certain images and things like that and like dissect it a little bit better. Um, but again, that's, that's down the road. I have like 10 videos I want to make and all that kind of stuff. And then we have the DLC too, which I'm super pumped up to, uh, to play that and to see what, see what direction they're going to go with that. But, uh, anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Much love. Peace.